We got a lot of flies in here. Wasp. Wasp. Oh, that's a wasp spider. Not a fly swatter. Where I grew up, waspers. Waspers. Oh, okay. Waspers. Okay. Good morning again to each and every one of you. Thank God for you. I'm glad to see you and I'm glad you're here. And I pray that you're glad I'm here because I'm glad to be here myself. Amen. And when I stop and I think about and I look about all the things that could be going on in my life and all the things that have gone on in my life, I'm just thankful that God has had enough mercy on me to allow me the privilege to continue on. I do not take it for granted at any time that I am here. You never take what God has done for you for granted. I got up this morning. He started me on my way. He, he, he let me see daylight. Amen. I, I didn't deserve it. But he allowed me the privilege of daylight one more time. To be able to get up, to move around, to read his word. To, get, to gain encouragement from doing so. This morning, if you have your Bible, if you have brought your word with you, if you would please turn to Luke chapter 22, starting at verse 24. We're going to, 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 to go through this uh, for just a few moments here because we want to talk about what Luke or how Luke saw things going on in the upper room. Everybody didn't have the same account right. of the upper room. I want you all to take note of that, that there are some things that some that 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 one apostle saw that the others didn't see the same way. Amen. Amen. If you found it, if you would, please stand for the reading of God's word. Luke. Chapter 22, starting with verse 24, a dispute also arose among them. As to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. And he said to them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over those in authority. Over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, let the greatest among you become as the youngest and the leader as one who serves. For who is the greater, one who reclines at table or one who serves? Is it not the one who reclines at table? But I am among you as the one who serves. Pray with me. Father, those things in life that we just don't understand, we can't comprehend. Father, give us the enlightenment, enlightenment that we need uh, to be able to discuss the subjects that don't always seem to be real clear to us. Uh, help us to gain from it, to understand the difference, and then to give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. You may be seated. For those of you all who have already looked and, and gathered the information. This morning, I want to speak to you for just a few moments from the subject of trying to go right, making left turns. Trying. Trying to go right, but making left turns. Some of you all are saying, well, I didn't know we were going to talk about NASCAR today. Well, we're not. <laughs> we'll get to that later on. But right now, I know they make a lot of left turns in NASCAR. I am right, ain't I? I mean, yeah, they make left turns. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, with, 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 with that. But I, I want you all to understand something. Have you ever took the opportunity, uh, especially here in the last few days as we've been dealing with issues of potholes and everything else that's going on. And have you noticed that 
every time you hit one of those potholes, it seems like it is doing it, it didn't do damage to your vehicle. And you think that you made it fine through it. There was no problem with it. But in actuality, as time goes on, you start to notice that either the inside or the outside of your tires are starting to wear unevenly. Have you ever noticed that? Too many times in our existence today, uh, we, 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 the bumps and the humps that we deal with in our life, if we're not careful, we get so frustrated, so upset, so mentally out of it that we don't realize that it has got us out of alignment. And because we're out of alignment, we start to wear unevenly. You would think, well, the disciples have been with Jesus all this time. Surely the goodness. They would have had it together by now. Jesus <laughs> tells his disciples something about his kingship that they really didn't want to hear. Of the four gospels, I want you all to remember this. Luke records the disputes. He's the only one that records the dispute between the disciples in the upper room. If you go back and look Matthew, look at Matthew, Mark, and John, they don't say a mumbling word about the fight that took place. But I want you all to understand something because I want to bring this home for you. <clears throat> Jesus was the host of the dinner. He, he, he told James, he, he, he told Peter and, and John, go and, and find the place. I love this because he, he told them, go into the city, go into Jerusalem. Because see, every night, even though Jesus had already been there, every night he would leave the city, go back out uh, to the Mount of Olives or Olivet, and he would stay there instead of staying in the city. He tells Peter and John, go into the city, find a man. Well, there's all kinds of people in Jerusalem. He says, find a man carrying, carrying a bottle or a jug of water. When you find him, follow him. Do what? He said, follow him. And when you get to where he goes in the house, go in with him. Tell the owner of the house, the master, the teacher has said, show, show us the room. Show us the room where we would observe the Passover. Some of y'all ain't going to get this before you die, but some of y'all will. Jesus, God the Father, has already orchestrated some things in your life that if you will pray and pray right, those del the deliverance that you stand in need of is already there in front of you. In, in, in other words, you ain't got you ain't got to shout. You, it, it don't make no difference if you you don't say a mumbling word this morning. I just want you to know that beyond the shadow of a doubt, there are some plans that have already been put in place for you because of your faithfulness. Oh, uh -uh, y'all ain't getting this. Y'all ain't getting this. Y'all ain't get. They went into a city, into Jerusalem. Found a man, one man, carrying a bottle of water. Followed him. And, and, and he took him to a house. They go in. And there's a room for him. They followed the man in faith. 
There's no rational because look, 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 they could have said, well, we're going to go right. We're going to do just exactly right. But now you and I would have said, I, it's too many men in here carrying water bottles as it is. I'd be turning left all the time trying to figure out which one of them was the right one. But spiritual discernment, in other words, sometimes you ain't even got to know who it is. God's already pointed it out. All you've got to do is follow suit. They, they got the room. They prepared the room. You, you know, Jesus and the rest of the disciples showed up. Nobody had a cell phone to call them and tell them what room or what house it was. Nobody. I, I'm just talking about stuff you don't even think about. Nobody had a GPS of the address of the house. Jesus led the rest of them to the same address. I, I'm, I'm serious. Have you ever really stopped and thought about it? Have you ever really analyzed the scripture and said, how in the world did this happen? Because, yeah, you want to do right. Here's the kicker. In making my in trying to go right, I still make left turns. But Jesus takes my left turn and turns it right. Do, do, do y'all get that? So e even, even if I don't have the right intention, and I love the analogy that was in the kids lesson this morning. Sometimes it, the decisions that you make affect you differently. Why, why am I saying this? You get up in the morning and you decide to eat Fruit Loops or you decide to eat Rice Krispies. Jesus don't care which one you eat. What happens is you get nourished by either one of them. You've got to be able to make decisions that are going to be godly, that are going to be purposeful, that are going to be direct for you, going to help you, going to guide you, and are going to keep you. And he will provide the instruction for you. Okay, but well here's where we got in trouble. For those of you who never really stopped and analyzed the, 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 the communion, the, 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 the last supper, uh, the last time that they would come together and, and eat the Passover together. When we stop and look at the positioning here, Jesus is the host. How do I know Jesus is the host? He told them where to go, how to fix it, where to set up at. And that he was coming. They get in the room. Everyone walks in the room. And Jesus gives them all a holy kiss. Including Judas. But not only does he greet them well, he positions them around the table. They sit and recline around the table that they're going to eat at. In the process of doing so, Jesus then gets up from his seat, takes off his robe, ties a towel around his waist, takes water and washes their feet. That was the first sign. Because somebody in the bunch thought that they were too good to wash everybody else's feet. So Jesus, showing the example and showing the way, washes their feet. He sits back down and for those of you all who, 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 who may not have gotten this, we all know that John was sitting on his right. But Judas was sitting on his left. And some of y'all are like, well, well, how do you know this? I'm going to show you in just a minute. Remember something. 
Judas was already in preparation of betraying Jesus. Amen. Judas had already went and received his payment for doing the dirty work that he was going to do. Amen. Jesus gave him a holy kiss when he came into the room. Jesus washed his feet as well. What am I saying? How many of y'all, and I did say y'all, would wash the feet of somebody that you just couldn't stand? Oh, it's going to get deep. How, 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 how many? And I got to say it like this, of us <laughs> are willing to even consider Having a meal with somebody that we just can't stand. And then carrying on a conversation. And see, it gets deeper because, see, everybody went to their left to, for, for their food. If you'll remember, Jesus said, the one that's going to betray me is the one that sops bread with me in the bowl. If Judas was on the other side of the room, how could he sop bread with Jesus? He had to be right beside him. He sopped bread with him. Now, the, the first dispute was, which one of y'all is going to betray me? They were all They've been with Jesus all this time. They were all supposedly going in the right direction. But even then, they started turning left. Wait, is it? Is it I? And, and they were saying, is it I, in reference to the fact that they really didn't believe it was them. But they just wanted to make sure and clear it up in their own heads that it wasn't them. How many times have you thought within yourself that I, I didn't do anything wrong, but yet and still you, you, you look wrong, acted wrong, said something wrong or went in the wrong direction. But you didn't do it on purpose. It just happened that way. He got past that dispute. And then all of a sudden. As Jesus is talking to them, they start murmuring, murmuring among themselves over who's the greatest. And I know Jesus is shaking his head because he's already had this conversation with them. You, you see, they've already been through this before. It, it hasn't been that long ago that, that uh, uh, the sons of Zebedee, the sons of thunder, uh, their mother came to Jesus and asked Jesus, Jesus, I got a request. And her request was that her sons, one would sit on his right and one would sit on his left. Can you imagine Jesus shaking his head? You want what? That's the way I would answer. But Jesus was so nice about it. He said, you know, it's really not up to me. Which one will sit where? Or who will be positioned where? I, I'm, I'm really not the one to give that answer. But be, because you see... At this time, Jesus had some power. But it wasn't going to be long before he would have all power. Jesus said it's not, it's not really important. And he looked at them and said, can you drink of the cup that I drink of? And you know what? This is when you know some people are just crazy. <laughs> they said, yeah. Can you imagine the smirk that went on Jesus' lips when he heard that? Oh, really? <laughs> you want this? Well, you're going to get it. Brothers and sisters, I want you all to stop and think about something. I, I was reading through, 
And I was going through this lesson. And it dawned on me, it really did not matter where they sit. The important issue was that they got in. We have put so much emphasis on the wrong kingdom. We want to make sure that the kingdom that we see right here on this side reflects the kingdom on the other side. And I got news for you. What's on the other side with Jesus ain't got nothing to do with what's going on on this side. Okay, let me show you. When Jesus said to them, look, the Gentiles do it this way. They've got kingships, they got lordships, and they lord over their people like this. But my kingdom, in my kingdom, the leader is the biggest servant. Y'all didn't get that. Jesus said, in my kingdom, the leader is the biggest servant. Now, many of you all who have studied history will know that Napoleon was a great leader. Napoleon once made the comment that he and Alexander had amassed these really large kingdoms while they were up and able to do so. But the problem with their kingdom is that their kingdom was established in fear. It was established in fear because they ran over, they beat down their enemies, they beat down anyone that opposed them, and they did it through fear. And their kingdoms fail. But Jesus' kingdom was established on love. Help me to preach this. Love and fear don't go together. The love that Jesus has shown enables us and illuminates us and carries us to the next level so that his kingdom has continued over 2,000 years. It's still growing. I know some of you say, well, it just seems like it's falling away here in the United States. Well, that's because we, we're falling away here in the United States. But you know what? All these other countries are picking up. Amen. You know why? Because his kingdom will never go down. But it will always go forward. Kingdom. We don't understand it. Jesus said, the greatest among you is the youngest. Now, where we come from, the, if the youngest is the greatest, most of the time, the youngest is the most unskilled. Has, has the least amount of knowledge. And the older ones have the wisdom or the knowledge that they have, they have attained down through the years. But Jesus said, I can take more. And do more with the youngest than I can with all of y'all old people who have done got hard heads and I can't tell you nothing. Oh, I didn't say that. I'm sorry. Sometimes this is where you get into new ideas. This is where you get into new thoughts. I don't worry about that child. Today's her birthday. She's good. <laughs> She going to party. <laughs> this is where you get new ideas. Because if we stay in the same thing, doing the same thing the same way all the time, we keep getting the same results. Instead of getting something new, in order to get something new and different to help the whole situation, you've got to get some new ideas, new thoughts in there. And most of the time, that's not going to come from somebody who's been around a long time. It's going to come from somebody New. Everybody likes to be stuck in that same rut. Like, well, I, I like what we got. Well, you may like what we got, but what we got may not be working for everybody else. 
That's why you have to change. Ain't nothing wrong with change. Stick around. The older you get, you'll see more change. If you stick around long enough and live long enough, somebody will be changing you. Because you won't be able to do it yourself. Let's I tarry. I know I've been here too long already. The, poor, the four paradoxes of Alcoholics Anonymous have tapped into the heart of this, this spiritual kind of power. They say we surrender to win. We give away to keep. We suffer to get well. We die to live. Jesus adds a further paradox. He says that we, in order to lead, we serve. It don't make sense. I'm going right. But, 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 but it appears that I'm not getting in the right lane, going in the right direction. Because in order for me to, to, to lead, he's saying here that I've got to learn how to serve. I worked hard all these years to get to the point of where I'm at. I, 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 I beat out. The world will say, look, you beat out whoever you need to beat out to get whatever you want in, the, in, in this society. I got news for you. God says, instead of beating them out, you serve them. And before you know it, you'll be leading. But that don't make sense to us. But that's what he says. It doesn't seem right that you and I should serve people that we don't like or we don't understand and we can't comprehend. But that's what we've been called to do. But we can only do this through love. And that's the answer. That's the key. Jesus was trying to get it across to his hard headed disciples that in order for you to come together as one, in order for you to make it, you're going to have to serve one another in order. I'm going to leave you soon. And because I'm going to leave you soon, you have got to love one another and help each other. You see, as long as Jesus was there, they didn't get the full understanding of where they needed to be because they put all their dependence in him. What he told them was, you've got to start to depend upon what I've told you, how I've, in, I've, I've given you these words and what I'm going to give you, you need to have in your heart. The problem is they didn't have it in their heart in that day. We don't have it in our heart this day and we're still going through blind, trying to go right, but turning left. Here we are. Jesus took it to the next level. They ate the meal. I, I want y'all to know something too. Because um, we, we will be talking about the crucifixion in, in days to come leading up to Easter. We read in here about the wine that they, they drunk uh, there in the upper room. This was a watered down wine. This was not a strong drink, but a watered down wine, a version of a strong drink. They drank four cups of wine while they were in the upper room, while they ate their meal. Now, some of you all, that not in here, but some of you all that are watching are going to get upset because the Passover meal itself is not to be done anymore until Jesus comes back. We do a commemoration of his of this meal. Only to remember what we are going to have when he returns. 
That's why we drink a watered down wine and a unleavened bread. In commemoration, in, in remembrance of what will happen when he returns. That's it. So, so, so I've got some friends, they ain't going to like this because they're still, they're still doing Passover. Jesus was the Passover and it's passed over now. The only thing we got to celebrate is when we all get together in glory and we serve that last meal. Some of y'all still ain't got this, but God bless you. I got news for you. I'm on my way to glory. Amen. And in the process of going to glory, I know I'm going to have to still go through some things on this side. I'm still going to have to deal with some people that ain't going to act right and ain't going to do right. I'm still going to have to deal with some individuals that are going to give me a hard time. They are going to make my life a living hell from time to time. And Jesus had told me, has told me that even in spite of what they may do, how they may say it, how they may live, I've still got to love those individuals. I've still got to be a blessing to them. I don't want to do it, but you know what? I've been given instructions as to what to do and how to do because I've been given those instructions. I'm going to do it in spite of. And I want y'all to understand why. Because one day, even though you may serve those that you don't feel like you need to serve, you may deal with those you don't feel like you need to deal with. You may win or you may lose every time you turn around and it feels like you're never going to win. I got news for you. Your day's coming. Your day's coming. Go on, serve them. Go on, serve them. Oh, y'all ain't feeling me. Kim, come here. Come here, Kim. Rodney, come here. Stand right there. Look that way. Look that way right there. Come here, Rodney. Stand right there. Look that way. Look right there with Kim. For those of you all that don't get this, I, I, I want to do a visual with you right now. Because you see, you ain't always going to be last. You ain't always going to have to go through. Someday you're going to get where you need to be. But you're going to do it by serving others. You're going to do it by being a blessing to those that are around you. If you look right now and you look at the situation that, that we're in, it looks like I'm at the end of the line. It looks like I'm not going to get anything to eat at all. But that's all right because I know that God is a, a deliverer. God is a way maker. God is a keeper. God will see us through and God will deliver us no matter what the situation is and what we may be dealing with. All you've got to do is trust in him and lean and depend on him. Why did I say that? Kenna, turn around and face me. Rodney, turn around and face me. If you look, I went from the back of the line to the front of the line. What you've got to do is learn. What you've got to do is learn how to trust him. Hold on to him. Lean and depend on him. Just because you're at the back of the line now doesn't mean you're going to stay there. But be a servant in order to be a leader. And then the last thought is be a faithful servant. Not a half one, but a faithful one. What are you trying to say, Charles? Here it is. Jesus. And for those of you all that didn't watch the kids lesson this morning, you don't know this. But Jesus in his prayer said uh, to, to his father, he said, Lord, is there another way we can do this? He got no response because there was no response to be given because he already knew the answer to the question. The problem with too many of us is we're still trying to figure out a way around doing what we know needs to be done. We're still trying to figure out how I don't have to serve that individual. Well, I got news for you. Ain't no way around it. Go on, serve them anyhow. He said, 
not my will, but your will be done. Because your will is going to be done. Because I'm going to go on to Calvary now. I'm, 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 I'm going to take my time and go to Calvary. Because you told me that this is the only way. The lamb that they ate on the table was only superficial in looking at the lamb that went to the cross. There are many of you all in here that don't think that this will work. I've got news for you. It worked then and it'll work now. You've got to learn how to trust. That's where the faith comes into play. Trust him. Let him guide you. Let him keep you. And let him deliver you. Jesus gave it all for us. He gave his life so that we would have a right to eternal life. So that we wouldn't have to worry about where we're going to spend eternity. If you have not made up your mind. I, today would be a good day to say, you know what? I'm tired of this. I'm going to turn it around. I've, 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 I, I've tried it my way and it didn't work. Jesus, you take over. I'm going to accept you into my life. And don't think that you're going to be you're going to get everything right because you're not. Why? Because we're sinners saved by grace. Let, let me say this. You were born to sin. Jesus redeemed us on the cross. But he gave us free will to accept him as our savior so that we would not have to go to a place that was not prepared for us, which is hell. So I don't like to talk about hell. Well, it's real. So now's your time. Now's your opportunity. Turn it around. For those of you all that are listening out there, find you a church. Everybody's getting their shots, so church is opening back up. It's time for you to go back to church. Amen. And it's time for you to get your life together. Trust God instead of trusting yourself. I can't trust me. I'll have to preach that later. <laughs> you can't trust me either. <laughs> but you can trust God and he's able to see us through God bless you this morning as we stand the invitation is extended serve 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 in order that you might lead when somebody sees you, they'll know that you're a child of God. Because they'll know that you could not do the things that you do unless it was God that was leading you. God bless you this morning. For those of you who have, who want prayer, please come and join us. Because I, I always stand in the need of prayer. And whether you like it or not, you do too. Now, if you're big enough, bold enough, and bad enough, come on up. I don't know what's going to happen the rest of the day, but God does. And I'm just trusting him to see us through. God bless you this morning. Heaven smile upon you as I pray.